Hi, this is Paula from CHNE. Today we're doing a weekly segment on municipal affairs. Because of the pandemic, council meetings have not been public, but they're still taking place. Inverness County's Keith McDonald is bringing us an update on the latest council meeting, which was on April 9. We'll be talking particularly about the municipal pandemic response. Later on in the segment, we'll be speaking with Tanya Thibault, Inverness County's Director of Finance, as she introduces new measures to help residents with property taxes and water utility bills. I heard that you had an update on the municipal pandemic response. Can you tell me more about it? Well, we gave a summary of a uh, number of activities the uh, municipal staff have been advancing to support the community. Uh, certainly we discussed the, uh, the School Plus program in our last interview, uh, but also we updated council some, on some additional activities such as um, looking to expand uh, food bank services throughout the municipality in order to access as much funding out of uh, Feed Nova Scotia and other pro provincial federal programs that are putting being put together to support seniors and residents if they're experiencing any issues with food, um, accessing food. And we've also went through um, efforts that staff have put together to develop neighbor helping neighbor programs online. Uh, basically, we've that was happening um, online already through Facebook groups. In particular, uh, I think the first one occurred in the Marguerite area. So that was just basically replicating uh, those activities so that um, other communities throughout the county can assist their neighbors, be it from accessing a required uh, medicine and to just helping them out um, with grocery deliveries. So staff uh, are going to continue to look at new initiatives and respond to the challenges that the community is facing in terms of pandemic and uh, look at ways that uh, as a municipality we can help alleviate any of the challenges people are experiencing in their in their day-to-day -day lives. And how will these networks work, the, the networks of neighbours? Well, certainly uh, it's difficult at this time to connect with individuals. So right now social media is, is a platform that most people are reliant on at this moment. So there are Facebook groups, people can sign up. Um, people can sign up in terms of I'm here willing to help uh, my neighbours and others that do need some assistance can as well post what challenges they're experiencing or put out requests and uh, and then solutions can be uh, put together just online in those various community groups. Can you tell me more about the vulnerable population database? Certainly. Um, municipal staff for uh, outreaching to the community for people to self-identify as vulnerable. Uh, first, we are looking at developing this uh, listing for seniors that are having challenges at this time. Uh, and then we'll expand that database to others that uh, are having uh, challenges um, meet the, uh, the challenges that basically the pandemic is, is, has added to their lives. Um, so what this is all about is so that the municipality can now reach to uh, these in individuals and keep track of uh, how, they're, how they're doing as, as well as um, connect them with volunteers that may be out there to help assist. So we want to expand that listing as much as possible and uh, hopefully we'll have a very robust list of, uh, of people that, uh, that need various uh, means of assistance during this time. Can people sign up to the database? Yes, they can. They can just uh, uh, go online uh, through our website. We'll update. Uh, um, we'll have updates on which of the community groups are out there active. There might be some new ones being added. Um, so it'll be uh, it'll be evolving as we move forward. This is just um, a question that I read on the agenda. Um, is there a, is there a team? Is there a, a team of volunteers or you just connect people? Well, currently right now, uh, we've realigned some of our staff uh, 
we would give them additional duties beyond their regular uh, work that they're required to perform. Uh, but we, we've reassigned a group of staff to uh, work to, on a daily basis to address the challenges the community has. Uh, so on a, they're basically uh, answering the phone, uh, depending on the request, forwarding uh, information to the people that have the inquiries or directing them to the provincial or federal entity that's been put in place to assist them. Uh, so on top of that, other organizations that are receiving federal and provincial funding to support various communities, groups, um, namely, um, namely seniors have reached out to the, to the municipality and we're working with them on a daily basis to help uh, those, uh, those organizations connect to the community and help deliver their programming here in Inverness County. So for instance, the United Way doesn't have a very uh, robust presence here in Inverness County. They certainly have done projects here, uh, but they're headquartered uh, in Cape Breton uh, out of Sydney. So they've reached out to our staff to find out if there's ways that we can help promote their programming and connect to our residents uh, with some of the initiatives they're putting together to assist seniors, families. Uh, they have a program that will be coming out here that just has been announced to assist uh, families and residents that don't have internet, internet service and have been unable to afford, afford that. Um, so we'll be uh, we'll be helping them promote that program this week, this upcoming week. There's an update on the Inverness wastewater assessment, right? Yes, the uh, there was a request for proposal that was put out by the municipality looking for companies to uh, submit their their proposals to uh, do the system assessment and pre-design for the uh, wastewater treatment facility in Inverness. Uh, so those were received. We had six responses and the staff team reviewed those and forwarded a recommendation on to uh, myself as CAO and we provided an update to council uh, last week in terms of who the successful uh, bidder was after all the submissions were reviewed and scored. So that's RV Andersons um, and they're going to be uh, working right away on advancing that project. Uh, right now, it's looking to be about a five-month initiative. Uh, so that's we hope to have that uh, advanced so that we can have a robust package ready for any federal and provincial uh, infrastructure programs that will be available in the upcoming months. And you should be getting funding from Nova Scotia as well for that project, right? Well, the municipality, what we'll be doing is this, this uh, report... Uh, this pre-designed report as well as system assessment will have detailed costing that will go towards a submission uh, through the federal uh, infrastructure programs which usually provide federal and provincial funds to these types of initiatives. I know from reading the agenda I know that there was a conversation about out-of-province out fishers coming to Shetty Camp. Can you tell me more about that? Well the federal government as well as the province has put in a requirement for uh, individuals that have come into Nova Scotia to self-quarantine. So I think that's now in place and any, any individual that is moving in uh, to uh, Nova Scotia to, for work uh, must uh, self-isolate for those uh, 14 days. Um, we're working to get some more updates on what the uh, what's actually happening at Chetty Camp. Uh, but our District 1 uh, counselor has put together a letter with his concerns and the municipality will be putting together some communications for this upcoming council meeting uh, for council to review so that we can forward um, the concerns of the communities to the appropriate federal ministers on this item. So the community is certainly um, are nervous about people moving into their community. Uh, this is a challenge that we're going to all have to face in the coming months as, as um, various industries start coming back online. How do 
we balance um, moving the economy forward and making sure that community members are safe. Uh, so I'm, uh, I'm expecting that there will be additional um, issues come up like this over the next number of months as uh, the tourism industry tries to get sparked uh, again. Uh, um, and we'll have to keep having these conversations with the various uh, communities in, in the county to see how they want to move forward. How about the local fish plant here in Shetty Camp? Is the, municip the municipality involved in any way regarding foreign workers coming in? Well, the municipality, we have no involvement in any foreign workers coming in. That's a federal program. Uh, so it's a federal responsibility. All the municipality can do is state the concerns of, of the residents and move those forward and, and, uh, and, and advocate on behalf of citizens that they're, they're having concerns. So uh, we'll certainly uh, have conversations with council in terms of what type of, uh, of letters will be advanced uh, in, the near for, in the near future. We'll be talking more about this issue with Shetty Camp Council Alfred Poirier today. The interview will be available in the evening. To complete our update on the latest municipal measures, here's Tanya Thibault. We have staff recommended to council <clears throat> to waive interest on overdue property tax accounts and overdue water utility accounts for the months of March, April, and May. So this doesn't eliminate interest that was previously added to the accounts but any new interest will be waived during this time. We had made a recommendation um, for the water billing for the period between January 1st and March 31st. Um, we made a recommendation to extend the due date on the water utility bills. So they would normally be due within 30 days, but we extended it to 60 to try to help people make payment arrangements and contact their staff and, and whatnot. Do people need to apply, at least for the, for the property taxes? No. So what this is, like normally at the end of each month, we would apply interest to any overdue tax accounts. And so we're just not going to do that. So we're not going to do that for March, April, and May. And okay. then the new bills will come out in June. Does this apply to businesses? And business yes. Business? yes, it applies to every single property tax account. If there's nothing going on a property tax account, there will be no interest obviously added. Um, it's just for those um, accounts that would be overdue at the time that the interest is applied. So a lot of people make um, payment arrangements over the year. And so <clears throat> they're going to see a little bit of relief for March, April and May on the taxes. Do you think this may be extended if the situation continues? Well, when it comes to the property taxes, we typically do our billing in June and I haven't heard anything otherwise. And so I suspect that we still will bill in June. Um, but what we do in Inverness County, we've always given residents three months to pay their taxes. So if we bill in June, they don't have to pay until the end of August. So this is a normal practice for us. And so we may have to look at something else at the end of that time, but we'll have to look at our cash flow and see and compare what payments are coming in in, um, in comparison to like previous years. So we'll have to take a closer look at that because we do have to watch our cash flow because we still still have essential services that we're Is the municipality receiving any help from other levels of government uh, regarding this, the cash flow? The um, Nova Scotia Federation of Municipalities is, um, is working on a tax deferral package and they're not sure what that's going to look like um, but um, they're still in the initial um, planning stages for that so I don't know what's going to what's going to result from that and there may be some things that we may do as a municipality we don't know yet we haven't had um, very many budgetary um, meetings so once we do that then we'll determine you know how we're going to address that those cash flow issues. Is there anything that you would like to add that, about these programs? I think council is aware of you know the the situation that we're in, and we're trying to alleviate um, 
any additional charges that residents could incur. We understand that people have lost their jobs and people are going to have difficulty making payments, but um, our finance department is fully um, operational uh, remotely. And so they're still answering calls uh, from residents about paying the taxes and how do they pay because they're no longer going to be able to come into the office in the short term. So they're making arrangements and I think the financial institutions are making arrangements to help the residents get set up online or make those payments for them. Thanks for watching and stay tuned. Our interview with Shady Camp Council, Alfred Poirier, will be available this evening.